Okay, so we're here with Avalon Biddle, a 125GP racer. Avalon, what are your plans for the next season coming up? Yeah, we're going to be racing 125s again probably. That's the most likely chance at the moment. I'll be racing this 2008 model at home, the RS 125 again, and hopefully going for the championship this year. Any of you guys that are looking at the idea of going racing, this is the lady that you've got to try and beat, seriously fast. With your leg, you've had an operation and it's all good? Yeah, I had the metal removed out of my leg, so I'm feeling so much better after that. It's, you know, it was kind of, it wasn't really bad, but it was sort of that niggling little pain, so it's been really good to get it out. So this is a, a, a young lady here with some serious results on the track. Not very tall, <laughs> you don't have to be big to race a bike. If you, if you want to play in this league, and you want to try and battle with Avalon, you do have to be seriously fast. Can you run us through what you've actually achieved over the last couple of years? Uh, well, racing, I raced in Australia on 150ccs and I got fifth in a championship over there. That was a pretty good highlight for me. And I went, came from street stock doing that as well, so racing 150s in New Zealand as well. And then last year I managed to win the 125 Grand Prix title, which was pretty prestigious. And yeah, this year I finished second in the New Zealand Championship and got second in the TT as well. Do you have plans for eventually going up to the, the 600 class, I take it, like everyone does? <laughs> yeah, definitely. We, are, hope, we want to move up to the 600s pretty soon, really, but at the moment 125s are affordable for us and you know we've kind of got our feet set in it at the moment, so we'll stick with 125s for another year and then hopefully move up to the 600s. And for those people that aren't aware of what it's like to ride the 125s, can you give us a bit of a running commentary on what they're like? Yeah, well, obviously they're pretty small, you know, um, but you can get around it. There's things that bigger people can do to get on them, and they don't have a lot of power, but they're really light and really fast around the corners, so you kind of just have to keep the momentum going, keep the corner speed up, and the brakes are really good, but you don't really need them <laughs> that much, so yeah, just pretty much keeping momentum going, and yeah. So you've got to be very committed. You guys brake so late that us guys on big bikes just wonder how you get around the corner. Is there a secret to it? Um, well, yeah, they, they stop pretty quickly, you know, being lightweight. They, yeah, they do stop pretty quickly, but also the class is so competitive. If you're not good on the brakes, you're pretty much just going to get passed by like five guys. So, I don't know, you just learn to do it after a while and you don't really have any other option. And it's something you'd recommend anybody motorcyclist to have a go in this, like a track's a safe environment, so it's all good? Yeah, definitely. You know, there's heaps of kids and things walking around here today and it's really good this to see them so interested in bikes as small as this. So, you know, it's good for smaller people because it's not so daunting as a big bike and, yeah, being on the track is definitely the safest option, so highly recommended. And being one of the few girls on the track, how the guys cope with basically getting their asses kicked? <laughs> They're pretty good about it, you know, they get used to it after a while. And, you know, in other countries and things like that it might be a bit harder, but definitely here in New Zealand the camaraderie of racing is so good and uh, yeah, they're pretty good about it. So as soon as you put your helmet on, you're just another racer, they don't give you any special treatment? Yeah, no, definitely not, just, just like anybody else.